the title of this call is The 15 Day Plan Got Married to the 90 Day Plan. Well, I want to explain the concepts behind that and how I came up with this whole thing. I've just seen a lot of great results from the directors who've really sunk their teeth into tracking their 15 day work that they do. The first thing is I noticed that you guys know your numbers a lot better. When I used to ask you, okay, well, how many people are you in front of on average? I would get awkward silence and blank stares <laughs> from a lot of our sales directors because you didn't know, you just didn't know and weren't tracking that and weren't focused on that. But now you know your numbers and I feel like that has made you more effective and strategic and has just added a lot of power to the results that you're seeing in your business. And when you know your numbers, you can work smarter, not harder instead of harder and spinning your wheels and wondering why you're not getting the results that you're getting. Your numbers give you clarity on why or why you are not getting those results. And the second thing I saw is a crazy increase in agreements in our area. Our first six months compared to our last six months, the number of agreements we brought in as an area grew by 32%. And I was super excited about that. And I feel like it's directly related to you guys being intentional about being in front of people and tracking the people you're in front of, because that brings in more agreements. And so a 32% increase is what we saw from the first half of the year and then the last half when you guys were working with a 15 day plan. Also, I think it created some friendly competition and camaraderie between the directors who were really doing it. I would always hear directors ask, well, where is she at with her points and what do I need to do to beat so-and-so? I like that friendly competition kind of took place and that camaraderie happened. And this is just a very subjective observation that you were more on it and you were in the zone and I just noticed that your focus increased. So how this came about is back in February, I went to a UK game invited by Amy Kim and her husband and then we went with Julia and Seth and it was in Lexington and it was like ridiculously fun. It was so fun because I love both of them and it was just fun to hang out and of course Cliff was with me too so it was just really an exceptional night and so of course being with Amy Kemp and Julia we're talking Mary Kay stuff and Amy told me about her 100 day plan that she has been using herself personally but then also with her unit and her future area and she just shared with me some of the results she had seen in her business and how it had helped her directors and I just kind of listened to her talk about it and then she sent me the training that she did in New Orleans on a director day she trained directors on her 100 day plan goal setting concept and so I listened to that and I just thought it was awesome kind of had some similarities with her 100 day plan and our 15 day plan after I listened to that I kind of took it and I tweaked it and I made it a 90 day plan and the reason that it's 90 days instead of 100 days is because I just like it to track with the quarters of the year and I like that it breaks down into 90 days so it's July August September October November December January February March April May and June so it tracks our quarters and then it also falls on events as you finish up your 90 days you go to an event and then you finish up the next 90 days and you go to an event so I like that the events are benchmarks for 90-day programs that you're going to go through. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the entire seminar 2015 year, which is normal. That's usually what you do in a new seminar year. You look at the entire year and you set goals, but it's hard to take in an entire year. So we're going to start with the big picture of what you want to happen in 2015, but the focus is going to be on the first 90 days because I think it's hard to plan for an entire year and you can lose a lot of focus and a lot of excitement for your goals. And if you're not on track for your goals, you can tend to give up around fall advance or around leadership because you're behind. And so we're just going to focus on this first 90 day cycle, July, August, and September. And the 90 day plan, it helps you figure out the why behind the 15 day plan. The 15 day plan is a great tracking system, but I think there needs to be the why behind it. And that is what I learned from Amy Kemp's 100 day plan is that you can really solidify the why behind what you're doing, which just this then adds power to your daily and weekly work that you're doing throughout the month. Let's talk about some concepts of goal setting. Goal setting is one of those skills that is just stupid simple. You know, we're all taught to set goals from a young age and we all have opportunities throughout our life to do that. And I think most people would think it's simple and easy to set goals. It is simple, yet it's very, very profound. And I think the majority of people are not effective goal setters. They don't really effectively know how to set a goal and implement a goal. And even myself, I thought I was a good goal setter before Mary Kay, but I totally wasn't and was not effective with setting goals and implementing them. And I've learned to do that in Mary Kay because here's what we've all done. I bet you've done this before because I know I have. Have you ever set goals and then totally forgot about them? 
and then all of a sudden you find it in this journal that you wrote it in two years later and you haven't achieved any of them or very few of them because that's definitely happened to me. I've set goals and I've forgotten about them. Have you ever written goals down and lost them? You just didn't know where you put it and you didn't know what journal you wrote it in and you can't even find the goals that you set? Have you ever set goals without a plan to execute? And I think that's a big mistake we make in Mary Kay. We're great at saying, I'm going to earn the Cadillac. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then there's no plan of execution with how you're actually going to accomplish it. Have you ever set goals that aren't really important to you and that there's really no strong why behind why you're setting them or why you chose that goal? I think that's another thing we can do in Mary Kay. We set goals that we think we should set or that we feel like sound good on paper, but they're really maybe not that important to us or there's not a strong why behind accomplishing that goal. Have you ever set goals without considering the larger picture of your life? That's another big thing is that you've got to understand what season in life that you're in. And sometimes you're in a season that it doesn't make sense to really push hard and go for the big goal. So to set a big goal that you're really not in the season of life that you're available to do the work to pursue that goal just causes a lot of frustration. The opposite extreme of that is that for those of you who are young, especially if you don't have kids, especially if you're not married or you're just single, oh, this is your season to run. If you're in that stage of life, it's such a season to run because life will probably never be more simple than it is now. If you're young without kids and especially not married, life will never be more simple because when the marriage and the kids come, life is more joyful. You have a lot more joy in your life, but you have a lot less time. There's more time constraints and a lot more responsibility. So those of you who are in that season of young and no kids, girl, you better be running hard and fast and taking advantage of this time because you don't want to look back and think, well, why, gosh, why didn't I do it then? Why didn't I just make big things happen then? And then have you ever set goals with no system to track them? That's another big thing. It's great to set a goal, but if you have no way to keep track of what you're actually accomplishing, it takes away the effectiveness of that goal. It's actually the execution, not the goal itself, that carries more value. Anybody can write goals down on paper and get excited about them. Then it comes time to execute. If you have no plan of execution, the goal doesn't matter. It's not gonna happen. Goals never really fail. Only implementation does. The goal is irrelevant without a plan of execution. And this program that I'm gonna walk you through, it's a goal setting and execution program. Not just goal setting, but goal setting with execution and also with a big why behind your goals. I want you guys to have complete clarity about your goals because when you have clarity, you spend a lot less time in guilt and worry because of the clarity and understanding of your why. I think a lot of you spend a lot of time in guilt and worry, especially those of you with kids, you're in guilt mode. Every time you leave the house, you feel guilty about it. And that is no way to chase down a goal. And I would guess if you have that feeling often, that kind of that guilty feeling, you lack clarity. You lack clarity on your purpose, on your calling, on how this can impact your family and your future. And before you set any goals, you need to be clear on what you want out of your life because you cannot effectively work towards a goal if you're constantly in guilt mode every time you walk out of the house. Amy Kemp quoted Andy Stanley in her 100-day training, and the quote that she read is that Andy Stanley said is that money follows vision. It rarely happens the other way around. And so the vision has to be so firm and established first before you can really effectively pursue a goal. We get paid in Mary Kay based on our clarity and commitment to our goals. And Amy Kemp, I, I thought she just made a really good point that I'm gonna share with you in her training. She says that a low paycheck usually equals low clarity and low commitment. You're not really clear on your goals and you're not really committed to do the work. Therefore, that equals a low paycheck. An average or inconsistent paycheck, it's kind of up and down, or it's just a little bit average, it's not what you want or need, can be the result of either low clarity or low commitment. I know some of you might have a very clear why and a very strong why, but you're not really committed to doing the work that it takes to achieve it. Or some of you are like super committed to doing the work. You can go out there and hold a power start and do Gen X Elite, but you're not really sure why you're doing it. And so then it just becomes this like checklist mentality. Well, I got my 30 faces in, great. You know, oh, I sold my 2000 retail, great, check. I got my new team member, check. And Gen X becomes a checklist mindset instead of I am out there working to get results, to change my life, to change my future, and to better other women's lives. So if you have a commitment to doing the work without a big vision behind it, it takes away your effectiveness and that can equal an average or inconsistent paycheck. And then a high paycheck usually is the result 
result of high clarity and high commitment. You're clear on why you're doing it and you're super committed to doing the work. And that's where I want you all to be by the end of this call is high clarity and high commitment. And usually you either do struggle with clarity or commitment. The frustration gap is that you're here, you are where you are in Mary Kay and in your life, but then most of us want to be somewhere over there. And there's this gap between where we are and where we want to be. I think the frustration comes when there's no clarity or commitment to close the gap. And that's what we want to do. That's what I do believe closes the gap is clarity and commitment. Clarity and commitment takes you from here, where you are, to there, which is where you want to be. Also, Amy Kemp made another really good point in her training. She said that clarity solves time management problems. I've heard a lot of you say like, oh, I just can't get my schedule figured out. I don't like my schedule. I, I can't figure out my time management. And you have all these time management issues. Not necessarily time constraints, just management issues. And I think that's usually translated into, I'm not really clear on what I'm doing. And I don't have a lot of clarity. Because when you're clear, you can figure out your schedule. I mean, you can all figure out your schedule and get a schedule that you're happy with and that your family's happy with. But if you're not clear, the schedule just never seems to make sense. Also, lack of clarity, I think, causes you to miss a lot of opportunities. You know when you're pregnant, you see a ton of other pregnant women, you just seem to notice them more. Or you know when you buy a new car, all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere you go. Or sometimes when I learn a new word, all of a sudden I start seeing that word everywhere. Well those pregnant women and those cars and those words were always there. You just didn't notice them until you had a new awareness of them. And I think it works the same way with opportunities. Opportunities are always out there. They're always there. They're surrounding us every day. But we don't notice them until we have clarity. And with a lack of clarity, guess what we notice? We notice obstacles, not opportunities. When you get clear, things start falling in place. And not because they couldn't fall in place before, it's just because clarity helps you see opportunities instead of obstacles. And I want to just give you a warning. The, the process of going through some of the goals and some of the questions is going to be time consuming and it's probably slightly overwhelming. I really went through this goal setting session myself and I, I felt overwhelmed by it. I felt, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> like it's a lot to focus on, it's a lot to think about. And so I want to talk about the feeling of overwhelmed really quickly. I think the state of being overwhelmed is just a state of mind that you can choose, but you don't have to stay there. So you'll probably experience the sense of, oh gosh, this is overwhelming. This is too much. This is too much to think about. And I want to just challenge you to work through it. The feeling of overwhelmed is just a choice and you can choose to work through it. You don't have to stay stuck in the state of feeling overwhelmed. Okay, so you might have that feeling, but just be committed to working through it because it's going to grow you and it's going to stretch you. And also be committed to putting the time in to doing this. It's time consuming on the front end, but it saves you a lifetime of missed opportunity, disappointment, and frustration. Once you've invested the time in this goal setting process, then you just get to work. Invest the time and spend time doing it, but then just work the plan. There's probably two personalities. There's a personality style that probably loves stuff like this, and you could spend days and weeks figuring out your plan, and you're spending too much time on it, and you're being a perfectionist about it, and way too see personality about it. And so if that's you, like you love doing stuff like this, I'm gonna warn you to not spend too much time. Just figure it out and then go do the work. Don't just keep planning, 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 and keep getting ready to get ready to get ready. Plan it, go do the work. For those personality styles that aren't really keen on doing things like this and it just overwhelms you and you feel bogged down by it, I'm going to challenge you to invest enough time to get clear. So you just got to know your personality style when it comes to doing stuff like this. Amy said this, I love this phrase, she said this in her training, she said, once you have the plan, head down, focus, no drama. Stop thinking so much. I think a lot of us get into this paralysis by analysis and we are over analyzing our lives and our self and our motivation and our goals and is it the right goal and we're just thinking way too much and you're getting way bogged down by overthinking. Okay, so make the plan and then head down, focus, no drama and just work the plan and don't think so much about it. I think you will astound yourself with what you can accomplish. Now, you can make tweaks throughout the 90 days. I think tweaks are always good. We're always wanting to evaluate, make tweaks and make things work better in our work and in, and in the full circle process, but you cannot reevaluate until the 90 days has passed. 
okay? So you can make tweaks in the next 90 days, but you cannot reevaluate or overhaul all your goals or make a new plan until 90 days has passed because this business works in a 90 day cycle. And if you stop to rethink the whole thing and replan it and question if you had the right goal and at the beginning, then you just start over again. And a lot of you just keep starting over again instead of just continuing to work the plan. You probably won't see that many great results in the first month or the second month, but if you can stick through the 90 day cycle and the 90 day process, then you'll see results. But you're gonna be tempted, some of you, especially certain personality styles, are gonna be tempted, oh, I need to start over. I need to start my 90 days over after it's been 10 days. Don't do that. You cannot reevaluate until 90 days has passed because it's only at that time that you can really see what happened. You can't let 10 days go by and then totally reevaluate the whole thing. Having a plan is just your meal ticket to success. Most people are capable of success, but they're not prepared for it because they don't have a plan. So you have to have a plan with action and that equals success. Action without a plan is like playing poker without looking at your cards. You're playing the game, you're taking action, but there's no real strategy or plan behind it, and so you're not gonna win. It really is important to have a plan. When you disrespect the planning process, you repeat yesterday's or last year's mediocre performance today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. You keep getting the same results because there's not an effective plan behind the work that you're doing. So choose this year in 2015 to create a new history for your life and for your business rather than to repeat the old history unless you like the old history. <laughs> if you like the old history, keep doing what you're doing. But if you wanna create a new history and a new story to this new seminar year, you've gotta make some changes. And we gotta figure out today what those changes need to be so that you can move forward with more effectiveness and power and momentum. It's not always the most skilled person that wins. I always say that I, I, I never really felt like I was that good at Mary Kay. I never really felt like I was the best seller or recruiter. I just had a good plan and I got to work. And that overcompensates for maybe a lack of natural skill or ability. It's not always the most skilled that wins. So also I do want to say it's okay to value spontaneity. I'm, I'm telling you to have a plan and a lot of you hear a plan and you think of it being too rigid or too structured and so yes we always have spontaneity in our work and we, we want to have a healthy balance between improv and a plan, okay? You've got a plan, but then you can improvise as you go. But you just don't want to leave your life and your business up to chance by not having a plan. After I heard Amy Kemp's training, then I heard her mom do training where her mom talked about Amy Kemp's plan and then also Tammy Craig's four-hour plan, which if you haven't watched her YouTube videos, it is like so, so good. So you got to check out Tammy Craig's four-hour plan because her four-hour plan could actually be a part of your 90-day plan to really work that four-hour plan. I think that might give a lot of you some focus and help you to create this 90-day plan. Jeannie Martin, I'm going to share just some things that she said in her training that I really liked. And she asked some questions that I thought were really convicting. And she said, does your workload merit a free $40,000 car? And of course, that's the Cadillac. And how many hours are you willing to work for yourself? Because I would believe most people on this call, if not everyone, had another job before Mary Kay. And we're so willing to go and work for someone else and give our time and our life to somebody else's company or somebody else's business to have a job. But then why aren't we willing to do the same for ourselves? Okay, why, why were we so willing to give our time and be on time and put in the time for someone else? But then when it comes to Mary Kay, we're not willing to work a full work day or a full work week. Okay, so does your workload merit a free $40,000 car if the Cadillac is your goal? Mary Kay Ash said herself, she said, if I'm gonna write you a check for a $40,000 car, what kind of work are you committed to doing for me? And that's kind of a piercing question. Because I think sometimes we get into this entitlement mode. Oh, I deserve this Cadillac. But do you really? Are you really doing the work that merits the reward that Mary Kay's ready to give you? Because they're ready to give it to you. But are you, are you really seriously doing the work for it? If anyone looked at your desk or your office or opened your date book, would anyone say, wow, that is a woman serious about her life and her business. She's on it. Or would they look at your office, your desk, and your date book and think, huh, I wonder what she does with her time. <laughs> what does this woman do? Um, so be honest with yourself, what's on the date book? If somebody looked at it not knowing anything about your business, would they see just on paper in black and white on your date book that you're serious about being intentional about your life and your business? Some of my experiences with this 90 day plan, cause I, I did it myself. 
And you know, as I was preparing this for you guys, it dawned on me that, oh my gosh, I need to do this too. I can't just tell them to do this 90 day plan and I haven't created one for myself. And so I'm like, I've got to do this. Some things that I learned is it took me longer than I thought to really create a quality plan. You guys, I went through it four or five times, honestly, before I felt like, okay, I've got it. I had to force myself to keep simplifying the plan because it was way too complicated at first. I just had to keep paring it down and simplifying it until it was something that I could sink my teeth into. So we can't overcomplicate this, okay? We gotta keep it really simple. There's usually two types of people, people who way overshoot goals or way undershoot goals. And it probably just depends on your personality. Some people say, I'm gonna do Cadillac production, but they've been missing and making production all year. And so that would be an example of overshooting a goal. And then those of you who undershoot, I think are just have a, this fear of, of not hitting goals and you can't just stay in that fear mode because then you never stretch yourself and do big things. If you typically overshoot, bring it a little bit more towards the middle. If you typically undershoot, bring it a little bit more towards the middle because we want to have dream big goals and we want to stretch ourselves, but then you've got to start where you're at. And it's only frustrating to way overshoot a goal or way, just like say a goal that's completely not where you're at. That just causes frustration. Okay, so bring it towards the middle as far as under or overshooting a goal. I didn't stop working with my plan until I had a daily plan and a weekly plan. So I really had to process through it a couple times and I'm gonna explain how I'm gonna do that with you guys at the end. Okay, so now let's actually get to the plan. This is page two through seven of the 15 day plan packet. And thank you to all my friends and mentors who contributed to this plan. So let's start on page number two, which is the first page. And you can see I do have mine filled out. We're gonna start there. Okay, and don't get overwhelmed, okay? Because <laughs> you might have that feeling when you're going through these. But the first two sections are really just meant to get your juices flowing. You're not really setting your goals yet. You're just kind of getting your brain working, getting your heart invested in this, and kind of figuring yourself out. That's the point of these first two sections. And there are six sections that you're gonna go through. The first two are really just to get you thinking. It asks questions like, how do you wanna feel 12 months from now? If you couldn't fail, what would be your heart's desire to achieve by September 30th, December 31st, March 31st, June 30th? It asks, you know, who do you want to be? What type of person do you want to be? What do you want to accomplish? What makes you happy? When do you feel the best about yourself? When do you feel really good about yourself? What gives you pride? What's the purpose of your life as you see it today? And what makes you feel centered? And so they're just questions to, like I said, just to get your juices flowing and get you thinking. And it's kind of, kind of fun to go through this. And then the last question asks, what would need to happen for you to be able to say on June 30th next year, so one year from now, that this was your best seminar year ever? So you kind of figure out your year-long goals, and it can just be one or two or three. It can't be a lot. It just can be one or two or three bigger goals, and we're going to work with those bigger goals, but then take those and break those down into 90-day increments. Okay, so that's the first section. And then the second page is your 50 reasons for achieving your goal. But those 50 reasons, when I typed them out, I highlighted the top 25, and then I came up with the top five, and then I wrote a mission statement based on those top five. And my mission statement I also typed out and taped in here. And you're gonna do this every 90 days, but I want you to go through that process so that it helps you to have the, remember we talked about the why behind the 15 day plan. I want you to have a why behind it. In this plan, you are actually going through your top 50 reasons. Step number two is let's be honest. This is just a section to help give you more clarity on your goals. And they're kind of tough questions like think back in your business in the sequence of the Mary Kay process, where do you drop the ball? What do you need to fix that skill? What habits are inconsistent with the life you want to live and the values that you have? What habits do you need to replace? What do you need to change in your life and in your business? What are three things you've been unwilling to do? So it kind of asks tough probing questions like that so that you can see hopefully what you've been unwilling to do and that could be, it could kind of be your sign and a clue as to what new goals you need to set in this, these next 90 days. This third section is, it's called Let's Get Crystal Clear. And that is the actual 90 day plan where you're gonna set the goals. It's got 10 spaces for goals. That doesn't mean you have to have 10 goals. You can have a little bit more or a little bit less. But I put those 10 spaces in there for you to set the goals of what do you want to happen in these next 90 days? 
What are 10 or so goals that you would love to see happen by September 30th? And we've all heard the, the S-M-A-R-T, you know that a goal needs to be smart, but I, I broke it down to just three things so you could remember them, and it's specific, measurable, and time-bound. That's how your goals have to roll, is they have to be specific, measurable, and time-bound. And you kind of have to start with a big vision of what you want for 2015, but then work it backwards. So to achieve the big goal in 2015, what actually needs to happen in these first 90 days? You've got to break it down into smaller goals. And those smaller goals need to be actually moving you towards that year-end goal. And I'm going to go through some categories that you would want to probably set goals in, just to kind of get the juices flowing with that. Number of stars you want for the quarter would be a big one. Your own personal business with how many faces, how many career surveys, how many sales, and how many new team members you want to do personally for the next three months. Your own personal book 10 and Gen X goals would be important. The number of book 10 and Gen X achievers you want in your unit would be another category to set goals in. The number of people you want moving up the career path would be another category. Your event wins, so fall advance, leadership, career conference and seminar there's always wins connected to each of those events so what wins do you want to show up with at each of those events the national courts court of sales and sharing could also be a goal that you start tracking in these first 90 days number of offspring that you want to have or your next promotion up the career path your unit club goal and then even the number of people that you want to bring to fall advance start thinking about that and planning for that right now to show up with that number of people at fall advance. Of course, you're going to set monthly new agreements and production goals. And then even little things like what I call close the back door goals. When your people like you and when they like the products, they will come into your unit and they will never leave. And they will always stay with you because they like you and like the products, even if they never do big things with Mary Kay. So how are you creating a unit of people who like you and who like products? because it's all about relationship building. So things like calling them on their birthday and sending birthday cards and anniversary cards and being invested into the people in your unit creates that relationship that they like you and they don't want to leave. And then training them on PCP, doing a product of the week or a product of the month and doing product knowledge training, having a rock and awesome meeting that your consultants can get plugged into, doing consistency club. Those are what I call close the back door activities. They're not really building your next offspring sales director, but they're making maintaining your unit size, closing the back doors so that when people come in, they don't leave. Okay, so that could be a part of your 90-day plan too, and a lot of that stuff you can delegate. You make the plan, but then have somebody else implement that plan because it's not the most income-producing activity that you can do personally, but you absolutely can delegate it. These goals have to be specific. Amy gave a couple of good examples that her directors had put on their 100-day plans that I want to go over with you. She said that one of her directors said, get more office help. And although that's a great goal to have in 90 days to get more delegated help, it's too vague. Get more office help is really vague. And so what Amy challenged her to do was to write out a description of the kind of help and what help she needed and that by the end of the 90 days to have 8 to 10 hours of help in her office. So she just got more specific and broke it down. Because sometimes when we see a goal like get more office help, if it's unclear in our brains how to go about doing that, then we don't do it. And so we've got to get really specific. Specific, it's gotta be measurable and it's gotta be time bound. Another example that I thought was really good that Amy did is one of her directors said, I wanna spend more time with my family. That was one of her goals, her personal life goal. Cause you're gonna set business and life goals. And she said, I wanna spend more time with my family. But then when Amy dug a little bit deeper with that, what Amy found out was that she actually didn't wanna spend more time with her family. She spent plenty of time with her family. What she actually wanted is she wanted to be more present in the moment. And to be more present in the moment means that she needed to work when the kids were gone and get all her stuff done and be on it and, and focused so that when the kids came home, I think there was this like three hour time frame between three and six that it was family time and dinner time and go over homework with the kids that she could literally put her phone down and not look at it for those three hours. So that became her goal. It started with, I want to spend more time with my family, but when Amy dug deeper, she realized that she just needs to put her phone down when it's family time so she's not distracted, so she's present in the moment with them. So so she's not feeling guilty about that but then also she's getting her work done so that she feels free to put that phone down when the kids come home and not have any guilt about it so you have to really 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 dig deep with these and not just set these surface goals that are kind of vague because then you're not going to do them or achieve them you're also going to do life goals too and so there's the section where you write your 10 career goals 
And then the next section is it goes through areas of your life, physical, marriage, spiritual, financial, personal growth, leadership, and relationships and family. And you're gonna pick one to two to three areas of your life that you really wanna grow in and set those personal goals too. Personal development goal for me is I do a 30-30. Every day I listen to 30 minutes of audio and 30 minutes of reading. And so that I'm always immersed in personal growth stuff, just keeping my mind and my heart exposed to positive things. So that would be an example of a personal growth goal, a leadership goal. It might be to read a new leadership book in these next 90 days. Okay, so it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Remember, just keep it simple. When it's simple, it means you're gonna do it. So you would set goals in your life. And then the next section is doing the math. And before I get into that section, I want to talk about some examples of 90-day plans. I emailed out to my directors examples of 100-day plans that Amy Kemp's directors did. And they broke it down by unit size, which I thought was really smart. So I sent you a plan for a unit size of 25 to 40. It's just an example to help to give you some direction with this. And then there was an example of maybe unit size 40 to 75. And then Amy Kemp's actual 100 day plan and her unit size is several hundred is on there too. And if you are not on my email list, you can find these at JeannieMartin.com. JeannieMartin.com has examples of 100 day plans. So if it helps you to look at somebody else's to create your own, then, then check that stuff out. Or, and if it's a distraction, don't worry about looking at somebody else's plan. You can just make your own plan. And then the really smart part of this plan is the math. And this is something I learned from Amy is once you set the goals, most people stop there. They're like, all right, I got my goals. I'm going to work towards my goals. Here we go. But then they forget to create the plan of execution. And that's what the math is. It's actually your plan to execute and do the work that it takes to achieve the goals you just set. So you can never just stop with the goals. You have to keep going to figure out the numbers and the math and the execution plan so that those goals actually do happen. The math is kind of like you start with the end in mind and then you work backwards. Every goal needs reverse planning and reverse planning is starting with the end and then backing it up to figure out what you need to do daily and weekly so that you end with the goal that you originally set. So for example, if you wanted to do 30 faces, that means you need to have three parties a week, which means you have to have six parties booked to hold three, which means you need to add two new bookings to your date book every day. So that would be an example of reverse planning. You start with the 30 faces, but then what do you actually have to do each day to achieve those 30 faces? That's what you're figuring out in the math. For example, if you want 10 new stars in your unit, and that's the goal that you want to end the quarter with is 10 new stars, you've got to back it up and figure out, okay, if I want this many stars, how many agreements do you need each month? Once you know the agreements, how many career surveys do you need to do each month? Once you know the career surveys, you need to have a strategy in place to do that number of career surveys to bring in the new agreements to bring in the stars. So that's an example of reverse planning and that's what you're doing in the math section of this goal setting. And then once you do the math, the next section is my 90 day communication strategy and mine is blank because I typed it out and I have it on another page because I needed a little bit more space than this. And so you've got communication strategies. So that would be how are you going to actually communicate this with the people who are affected by this goal. And so that would be for your customers, for your unit, even with your family. What is your communication strategy? When do emails go out? When do you do recognition? What do you train on at your meeting? How do you communicate that an event is coming up? How do you work with your potential star consultants? How do you work with potential Gen X people? How do you communicate with potential people moving up into red? You have to figure out on the front end how you're gonna communicate all of these goals that you have and you have to have a strategy for that communication. And so it lets you think through that. So for the next 90 days, how are you gonna actually communicate these goals? So for example, maybe you want five Gen X achievers every month. For me, what I had is on one day of the week, I spent time communicating with and coaching the people who I believed could finish Gen X. That was my communication strategy. I think it was every Tuesday after the numbers came in on Monday, I would communicate and coach and encourage the potential Gen X achievers. And so that could be an example of a communication plan is you just have a certain day a week that you're coaching to reach that goal of having five Gen X achievers in your unit. What's after that is what we call the calendar. Because once you have the plan and you've got the communication strategies, all of these things need to go in your calendar. 
you need to look at your calendar for the next 90 days. And you need to even write down the significant events that are happening in the next 90 days so you can kind of see the flow of the next three months. Get fall advance on your calendar. Are you going to any weddings? Get those on your calendar. Do you have any special family events? Do you have any travel? Anything out of the norm needs to go on your calendar so you can kind of see at a glance how these next 90 days are gonna flow. After the plan is complete, the goal is once the math and the communication strategies and everything's solid, is that you look at it every day <laughs> and that you read it every day. And that's just gonna come with discipline, but you're not gonna do it unless it's in front of you all the time. So you've gotta put it up everywhere so you see it, so you're reading through it and you're engaging with and reminding yourself of what you're working towards. The next section is step number four, and it's all about creating habits. And our area has talked a lot about key behaviors and your five daily key behaviors and that's a part of your 15 day plan tracking is actually tracking these key behaviors because once you have the math established then it becomes this daily habit that you work towards. So for example your goal is to do Gen X Elite every month. Well that probably needs to translate into a daily or weekly booking goal which would be a key behavior. On this section you list your goals right here and then you list the key behaviors that you're gonna do daily or weekly. I know not every goal has a daily goal connected to it. It might just be a weekly goal, but you get clear on what your day and what your week needs to look like based on the goals that you have. You never really change anything in your life until you change what you do daily. So a big part of this plan is just figuring out your daily routine and the daily activities you need to do to stay on it with your goals. And then the next section, it says let's do scary things. Doing scary things is the only way that builds confidence, which is one of the most attractive qualities that you can have, especially in Mary Kay, because it attracts people to you. Confidence is only born out of action. So what are one to three scary things that you've been unwilling to do so far that if you started doing it in your business, it would change everything in your business and also build your confidence? Because I would really consider what those scary things are and incorporate that into your work week and into your plan so that you know you're stepping outside of your comfort zone and pushing the limits of your comfort zone. And then the last step is let's be accountable. And it lists ways in our national area that you can be accountable either to your senior director or to myself. There's six different ways you can be accountable and it allows you to choose your system for accountability. Accountability makes us all better and I know we resist it sometimes but your numbers aren't going to change until somebody knows your numbers. And so it allows you to be intentional about how you're going to choose to be accountable. Hold yourself accountable first but then also be accountable to somebody else. That is the six page goal setting section that you're going to go through. And as I wrap it up here, I want to explain what I want to challenge you to do next. I want, I want to challenge you to take a couple hours and go through this. Have a coffee and strategy type of session with yourself in a quiet place where you can sit down and really process through this stuff. Go through this 90 day plan and turn it into me and allow me to help you maybe tweak it or simplify it or if it's a little bit vague, make it more clear. And so by turning it into me, I might give it back to you and say, do it again. <laughs> um, or tweak this, or you know what, this is really vague, or this is unclear, or you know what, this doesn't seem right. Not that I'm gonna like tell you your goals, but I just wanna engage in this 90 day plan with you so that you get a really clear plan. And so now the next step is just to take time yourself and really engage with the goal setting process and let's get clear in the next couple of days about what 2015 is going to look like for you and how you're going to attack this first 90 day plan and make the changes you want to make this new seminar year so you land where you want to be next June 30th.